Hello, New York. So if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And if you're a tech entrepreneur, everything seems solvable with a new startup. In San Francisco, where I come from, everybody's working on a startup or two. Even your waiter is likely to pitch you on his new Locavore app. So it's no wonder that we see a huge number of people, uh, mostly young, childless people, working on solving the, the education crisis, right? Building, gamifying the classroom or, or social networks for teachers. And it's like the ultimate revenge of the nerds on a system that we all hated, right? <laughs> now, in a startup, we are, it's a high probability of death and dismemberment and a low likelihood of fame and fortune. Um, but, and it's easy to embrace, to embrace failure when it's you and a co-founder working on a fart app, but it's child endangerment if you're working in something on the future of kids. Um, but come on, there are worse things than child endangerment. <clears throat> I mean, how hard is it to create a school that doesn't suck? That's the story I want to tell. This is my son, Quinn, who is bright, creative, curious, until the third grade, when he went to a very nice but very conventional school. And um, he just started to get paralyzed by doing things the wrong way. So um, I was introduced to a new school called uh, Brightworks, being founded by a guy named Gaver Tolley, who was famous for doing a very popular TED talk called 50 Dangerous Things You Should Let Your Kids Do. Danger, now there's an idea for a school. Now, truth be told, most of parenting is working at your own demons from your own childhood. In my case, I was the product of an all boys Catholic uh, prep school. And you know, I, I grinned and bore it, I, but I mostly I was bored out of my mind. You see, I was also the, the product of an experimental school in Santa Cruz, California, where they treated each kid as being the, totally autonomous with how they directed their own education. I put on Shakespeare plays and published newspapers. My sister also went to the same school. She learned some things, such as how to smoke cigarettes. Now, she probably wasted an entire year of her, of her education, and yet she still graduated from college and, uh, and became a star performer at Google. So to me, there was very little risk, little downside about doing something different. So I told my wife, let's put Quinn in that school of danger. And you know, she loved, she loved our, his current school. It was basically Hogwarts for hipsters. Uh, <laughs> but, but she agreed, she agreed to have an in-person informational interview with one of the founders. So Brian rolls up two days later with a roll of butcher paper and a Sharpie and proceeds to explain the school idea uh, in pictures. It's basically a series of uh, project-based learning experiences. Uh, no homework and kni knives for everybody. <laughs> Quinn and Amy are they're over the moon about it and pretty soon it's like we've joined a cult. We, we pull them out of Hogwarts, we start evangelizing to all of our friends and strangers alike, and we're in love with this idea despite the fact they have no campus, no teachers, and no money. But, but soon they start to find a campus. This is a 10,000 square foot beautiful warehouse as a campus. Uh, staff starts to sign up with just the promise of future payment. Um, we're unstoppable, okay? And then one day, disaster strikes. Six weeks from the opening of the school, we get a note from Gaver Tolley saying that he's broken up with his founder and um, we're screwed basically because the, the staff is, is taking off. The kids, of course, are the ones who are the real victims. Some of the parents feel, um, feel terrible and they decide they're gonna start their own school. Other parents put the, their kids back in the schools that they were failing them in the first place. But few of us stick it out. And even though the fantasy is over, reality has its own rewards. And so the, the remaining parents step, they step it up. It's no longer a vision that we're consuming, it's one that we're participating actively in. And, uh, and so we work all, all, all day and all night to get that school open, and open we did. And as a school, we fail as often as we succeed, but failure is actually built into the idea of the school. So this is the first project. The kids use power tools to build Kid City, an actual building with rooms for each of them. This is another project. My son did a Lego stop-motion movie, uh, a love story with zombie complications. And, and they, they, they suffered through horrible lighting conditions, but they made it part of the storyline. This, of course, incredible floating arm trebuchet, an amazing way of hands-on learning about physics. It was a catapult that can throw a ball farther than Babe Ruth, but it almost didn't happen because the prototypes kept falling apart. They had to change their plans in the middle. So, as Gaver says, the potential for engaged learning is inversely proportionate to the knowability of the outcome. And this is why I think parents are the greatest hurdle to 
educational reform. We care too much to let go of the outcomes. So I say, embrace the danger. Thank you. <laughs>